I don't like you. I really don't like you. I would go as far as to say that I hate you, but I don't think you're worth that much an emotional response from me. You have nothing but a burden to me, to my time, and my money. You mean nothing to me. But, I made a promise. I intend to keep it. So come on. Let's go. Wow, that was depressing. So, in the last video, I mentioned that all I have to do now on the helmet is to fill and sand some small cracks and voids. And that is true, but there is one more pressing matter, which is that the ears aren't the right shape. Basically, when I 3D modeled the helmet, I didn't have the best reference photos available, so the ears didn't come out how they're supposed to be. So before I do the final stages of filling and sanding, I'm going to fix that first. Currently, I don't have a plan, but I'm sure me the next scene will. Yes, I do have a plan, but let me show you what the issue is first. Here is the helmet as you guys saw it at the end of the last video. Right now, the ear is too narrow and the top is slanted up. When looked at next to the movie helmet, you can easily see the differences. The first thing I did to start fixing it was to cut off the top just to make sure it was parallel with the bottom of the helmet. I also did some grinding down on the inside of the ears as well to allow for the right contour now that the ears are going to be reshaped. Once that was done, I traced the ear onto some paper and then extended some lines to get the correct profile. With that cut out, I traced it onto a sheet of ABS plastic twice and cut out two matching pieces. Those were then super glued into place. But to hold them in place more securely, I mixed up some JB Weld and added that along the seam edge. And after that was cured, there were still some openings in the helmet where it was ground down, so the holes were covered with painter's tape and JB Weld was added to the inside. Once that was secured, I could go ahead and start filing that down. There's a decent chunk of the ear still missing, so Bondo glass was mixed up and globbed onto the helmet to do the bulk of the filling. And one more thinner coat of plain Bondo body filler was added to do the final filling. The ears were then sanded down to their final shape. Well, almost. I got so annoyed with so much sanding, so I started adding more body filler to the rest of the helmet on places that still needed it. I then went back to sanding, and there was a lot of sanding done. But after a while, it looked really great. The ears were the right shape, and the helmet is finally looking closer to a final product. And after giving it a light sanding all over, knocking down a lot of the 3D print layers that were still visible, I gave it a nice heavy coat of filler primer. Once that was dry, you could see a little more clearly some of the problem areas that still persisted. The next thing to do was to add glazing and spot putty over the majority of the helmet, since there were small issues almost everywhere. After that was dry, I gave the whole thing a wet sanding with 220 grit. I did wet sanding because the spot putty tends to clump up really easily since I applied so much, and the water helps avoid that. This stuff is really just supposed to be used for tiny pinholes, so dry sanding would typically be just fine. But I gave the whole helmet one final coat of filler primer and then sanded that smooth with 400 grit. And with all that stuff done, I can actually start painting. The original plan was to mold and cast copies of the helmet and have one of those casts be what I finish and then sell the extras, but the hype and demand for this has died down so much because it took so long for me to finish that doing all the molding would be unnecessary and kind of waste of money, so just having the finished 3D print for myself is good enough for me. But when the whole thing was dry, I brought it inside to start working on the final details. The first thing was tracing the eye hole so I could make a liner out of foam. With the eye traced, I drew some offset lines on either side, I then cut out the paper template and traced it onto some foam, and then cut out two pieces. To make the whites of the eye, I used a cotton fabric sheet that I found at Hobby Lobby for only a dollar. 
I trace the outside of the eye template twice, cut them out, then hot glue them into place. And now it was time for the mouth liner. In the last video you saw that I originally had this piece as part of the 3D print, but I cut it out. That was done because I wanted to have a soft foam piece against your face instead of a hard plastic piece. This part needed to be a little thick, but all I had was the 2mm craft foam, so I just used some spray adhesive and stuck two pieces together. And just like the eyes, I traced the template and cut the piece out. So both the eyes and the mouth were done, but before I could attach these, I had to finish up the painting. The helmet right now is a little too clean looking, so using the dry brush technique, I added some silver marks all over the helmet to make it look scratched. So now the helmet looks damaged, but it doesn't look dirty just yet. So to fix that, I did a wash of watered down brown paint all over the helmet. I then wiped away most with a paper towel, but there's still little bits left over in the crevices to emulate dirt being built up over time. And this was done one more time, but this time with a black wash. To make sure all this dirty stuff stays exactly how it is and not get any dirtier, I clear coated the entire thing. I did add the mouth liner to the helmet off camera, but here you can get an idea of what the eyes are going to look like. There isn't really much to see here besides my awkward contortion, but I hot glued both of the eyes in the helmet, but that kind of caused an issue. Well, I just got the eyes and the mouthpiece installed, but there's one issue. I had the helmet leaning up against the edge of the counter and it accidentally left an indention in the clear coat. The clear coat was applied maybe about an hour and a half ago, so it was hard enough to handle, but not hard enough to withstand something as sharp as an edge. So I have to wait about 24 hours of this dry fully, then I can sand it back and apply the final coat of clear. So the helmet was sanded and clear coated off camera, but once that was done, I could start on the electronics. I took my old Iron Man arc reactor I made from a while back and stole the LEDs from that so I could use them for the helmet's glowing eyes. So I took the LEDs and hot glued them onto a foam square. This was so they could be installed onto the helmet easily, but also still block the light from shining directly into my eyes. This lighting method, along with the foam liner and fabric for the eyes, was taken from Bob over at I Like To Make Stuff. He already made one of these helmets himself, but entirely out of EVA foam. If you haven't already seen his video on it, I definitely recommend go checking it out, and also his entire channel. But once they're glued in, I tested the lights out, and it's super cool. I will admit though, it looks better on camera than it does in real life, but I'm still very happy with it. So after soldering it to the light wires, the battery pack was hot glued into place onto the back of the helmet. There were still loose wires, so these were hot glued to the helmet. I also added some foam pieces to block the light from shining down onto my face. Before they were added, my lips and cheeks lit up when I wore the helmet, but now they don't. The very last thing to do was to add some padding in so I won't be a bobblehead when I'm wearing it. So I cut down some upholstery foam that I had into some squares and attached them with hot glue where it was needed. Some pieces had to be a little bit thinner, so I just trimmed them down and glued them in place too. But with those glued in, the helmet is finally complete. Well, there you go guys, this concludes the Batman Helmet build series. It took about a year and a half, a little more than that actually, uh, to finish this, but it's finally done. So I guess this means I can finally finish the Iron Man Helmet now and definitely not start on two other projects. But I want to say thank you for watching this video and the entire series and liking and commenting and all that stuff. It, it really means a lot to me. But more than just saying thank you, there's a link in the description if you want to check it out that shows more of my things. But yeah, I uh, hope you enjoyed this series. I really enjoyed making it. So, until next time, I'll see you guys later.